Good evening, I'm Geraldine Sin. And I'm Matthew Nolavakondua. Three days ago, the Fijian Elections Office launched its Know Your Elections campaign. With 2018 being an election year, this awareness drive is a critical element of informing and educating all voters. Hand in hand with this, the FEO has also developed an election information booklet. And we'll be talking about this in detail with the Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim, who is our guest tonight. Good evening and welcome to the show. Now, last week, the Fijian Elections Office launched its uh, Know Your Election campaign. Please tell us more about it and how it went. Yes, uh, Geraldine, uh, last week, the Fijian Elections Office uh, launched our Know Your Election campaign. Um, it's an awareness drive for the 2018 general election. Uh, we, uh, we launched it on Wednesday here in Suva, but uh, immediately took uh, it out to the uh, rural areas. Um, the approach we've taken for this awareness drive is from rural areas to come to the urban areas. And uh, so Thursday was all about uh, rural areas. And uh, myself, uh, I myself went with Commissioner Nainduki to Bua and uh, conducted awareness in Bua. So yes, it started on the 15th. It's going right up to 29th of April. And uh, we hope to engage all the voters in this period. And what was the response <coughs> for the people in Bua? Uh, we had a good turnout um, in Boa. Um, uh, we we were actually greeted very well. Big uh, Binakwa Kalebu to to Boa, who also made himself available for the session, uh, and we um, conducted an awareness and also took on some questions from from the part the the attenders. Uh, all in all, I think um, it's a good engagement uh, mm -hmm. to take elections into the into the rural areas of the country. Um, it's urban areas, you, they all come across this through either the media or, or some, some sort, but uh, the, uh, the rural areas is where we are trying to, to make sure that elections information is equal in, in both areas. Now mm -hmm. this is a six weeks awareness program and you've mm -hmm. got 45 teams, am yes. I right? Yes. Now the staff for these teams, how were they recruited? So the the voter awareness assistants were recruited on a merits based uh, and they were required to first uh, do presentations to us to show us that um, they are able to uh, provide information and convey it and uh, so based on that criteria we have recruited 45 teams of three people in a team and uh, uh, they have been trained by, by our uh, training team as well as an, a consultant from New Zealand and uh, following this training uh, they have now been deployed. Now with these teams being deployed what sort of resources are they using? Yes so um, the primary resource for the voter uh, the Know Your Election program is our uh, election information handbook. Mm -hmm. The election information handbook is, uh, is uh, a comprehensive compilation of information that is relevant for a voter. Yeah. And uh, this handbook is what our team is distributing and uh, they have also got with them um, the uh, 3D model of a polling station that uh, teams carry and they can demonstrate the, the setup inside a polling station by showing this model and uh, it acts as a refresher for those who have already voted in 2014 yeah. and for the new vo voters it also gives them a fair idea about what to expect when they reach a polling station. And how, how effective has this been? Oh, this is of great interest. I mean, the places where I have conducted awareness, um, I have seen a lot of interest, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, uh, opportunity to identify various places so that um, there is a lot more uh, knowledge about the polling place uh, environment. Um, I also saw that this generated interest in a few Fijians to actually now want to work in the elections. Uh, so. Um, I think uh, this has been a positive thing. It's always a uh, uh, show and tell yeah. uh, that works better than, 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 than a written booklet. So not discounting the election information booklet, um, the uh, props are also very effective. Did this clear <coughs> any misconceptions about how the police think polling stations work? Yes, um, some, some individuals asked us to show where the voting machines are. Ah. And uh, so we had of course it was a good opportunity, good question at the time because there is uh, no voting machine mm -hmm. for the 2018 general election. It's a manual uh, voting system where you will be given paper ballots which will be marked using pen mm -hmm. 
and placed inside a ballot box and counted manually by our staff. So there is no machines, no software, uh, and uh, there is, uh, uh, it is all purely manual, mechanical, and uh, in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, of course, with your teams that are being deployed out there for the Know Your Election campaign, you said that they were go going to the uh, rural maritime areas mm. mostly. Uh, what about for children who mm. are in high school? We are going to have a lot of young voters first mm. times. Will they be visiting schools as well? Yes. So, this year's Know Your Election program also um, uh, has the nationwide voter school voter registration drive and uh, teams visit schools. Um, we went to one during my visit to Vanua Levu. Uh, we went to Boa Central College uh, to register the newly eligible voters in, in that school. And uh, similarly, all over the country, I think teams here in Suva went to Maris Brothers uh, High School, uh, Natambua High School in Lotoka. Mm -hmm. And there, is, there are teams that have already departed for the islands. Uh, and so, yes, so we're registering new voters. At the same time, we're recording deceased persons uh, from Wednesday till uh, yesterday, uh, we uh, sorry from Wednesday till Saturday. Yes, yesterday, uh, we r have already received a notification of 49 deceased persons, which is also an integral part in keeping a very current and clean voter roll. So uh, the, the 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 response rate is pretty high, um, and uh, based on what my communications team has told me. Uh, we're looking at having had uh, engagements with over 1,500 people um, between Wednesday and Friday alone. And uh, I think this Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, the teams were out distributing, and we have distributed over 15,000 uh, election information booklets uh, by, uh, by our own staff. They, mm -hmm. they physically handed 15,000 election information booklets to people on the streets. That's very commendable. Thank you for that. We'll be back with more after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Now, Mr. Saneem, you mentioned that the election information booklet was also launched and that mm -hmm. the team had distributed over 15,000 last week itself. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the election booklet itself. Of course, the <coughs> one that we have right now with us is in English, but mm -hmm. then considering our population, mm -hmm. most of the speakers are of Itauke, mm -hmm. Hindi, and of course other languages. Mm -hmm. What other languages have they been reprinted in? So, um, we've translated this book into five different languages. and. Uh, after the translation, uh, we are currently working on an audio recording of the entire booklet, so that uh, persons with uh, um, with the uh, with visual impairment mm -hmm. they are able to hear the book um, being read out loudly. Uh, we are also working on a sign language interpretation mm -hmm. of the entire booklet, so this will also be available on our website mm -hmm. for. Um, uh, voters who would like to access uh, those f those means of uh, knowing the contents of the book. Mm -hmm. So um, the booklet on the in on our website can also be you on can be enlarged mm -hmm. uh, significantly to allow a person to uh, to see it in bigger font. Mm -hmm. um, and so the website has got a very interactive platform for the booklets itself. Yes. Regarding the content of the booklet, what mm -hmm. does it contain? What can people expect to learn from it? Yes, so the booklet uh, has been designed to give comprehensive information about elections uh, to a voter. Uh, we have uh, strategically placed information there, uh, starting with a glossary of commonly used jargons in elections. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's useful for our voters to, to, to know this in advance. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, the, uh, we've started with vo voter registration. Uh, then we've gone on to, to how to find your polling venue. And then we've gone to uh, voting, the three types of voting in Fiji. Uh, we've also explained counting mm -hmm. as well as the results uh, and seat allocation. Mm -hmm. So uh, to give a full 360 picture of the elections. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to get a book, where could they get one? The books are, uh, well, in the papers on Saturday, yeah. uh, we inserted the books in both newspapers on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The books will also be inserted in the, the postal boxes mm -hmm. uh, by this week. Uh, books are also being sent to uh, our major corporate organizations, not major, to a lot of corporate organizations. Uh, so if your organization received our calendar, yeah. your organization will soon receive the election information booklet. Mm -hmm. uh, our teams have been distributing them in their uh, visits. Uh, and if someone is interested in one and they don't like a soft copy, you can pop into any of our nearest Fijian elections office uh, 
and uh, get a copy of the book uh, for free. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting, rather, to visit your Facebook page and see how detailed it is. I was ca captivated by the web series that you're starting mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. the first episode. Very mm -hmm. detailed, very informative. Um, can we expect other episodes mm -hmm. to come out to be the same? And what will do we? What can we expect them to be? Is this the Know Your Election series? Know Your Election series. Yes, um, the Know Your Election series is actually uh, our uh, our our prop, as I would say, a visual prop to complement the election information booklet. Mm. Um, it's uh, uh, designed to uh, give more visual information from the information that we have typed in the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, Edwin and Vosita have taken up the project to, uh, to set it up and do it. And uh, there, there is going to be topics covered in that one, I think, is voter registration, uh, talking about the three different types of polling. They're going to also be talking about the ballot paper process, yeah. mm -hmm. the finding your polling station, uh, and uh, a few others that uh, we will be introducing in due course, which will go, which are not uh, very generic, general, but they are actually very specific to processes uh, in the election, um, so that voters firsthand can see what the process is uh, and decide for themselves. Um, I can tell you, uh, one of them is about the ballot paper production and ballot paper custody. Mm -hmm. So we will be te we'll be showing, not only telling, we will be showing how the ballot paper will be uh, kept secure and safe. Mm -hmm. And we will be showing the processes involved in its production, not, not very, uh, not possible to show inside a factory that prints it, but we will show you the, the processes that the FEO has designed to ensure that ballot papers are safe, that the number of ballot papers is, is concise, and that the quality uh, of the ballot paper is, uh, is maintained. So. Um, just one example of a, a very specific uh, topic that will be covered in the Know Your Election series. Mm -hmm. um, this may be of interest to a lot of people to, uh, to, to, to understand the process. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Taking us back a step, though, uh, regarding the information booklet itself, mm -hmm. of course, earlier on, the uh, FEO had uh, released the provisional list of mm -hmm. polling venues on mm -hmm. their website. Yes. Is that information also included in the booklet? No, the provisional list of polling venues is not available on the booklet. Uh, this is because uh, I would think that a voter would be more concerned about their own polling station. So um, on page eight of the, uh, page nine of the election information booklet, we have uh, provided information on how you can see where you are voting in the next general election. And um, to do that, all the voter needs to do is type their um, voter card number mm -hmm. on, a, on a blank text message, uh, on a text message and send it to the number 1500. Mm -hmm. And the platform is designed to uh, almost immediately reply to you and advise you where you are currently registered to vote. And if that is not convenient to you anymore, uh, you can then apply at the nearest voter service center to change your polling venue. Uh, generally in, in 2014, there were a lot of people who checked their polling mm -hmm. venues on election day, 100,000 in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, we have opened this platform since February this year. Mm -hmm. So we expect a lot of Fijians to take advantage of this opportunity and check their venues now so that after this election nobody comes to me and says, you know, my wife voted somewhere else and I voted somewhere else. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to correct their details and, and uh, I encourage everybody to do so. Since February, we have received over 35,000 queries. Mm -hmm. I was hoping it would be over 335,000 queries, but there is still time, and I urge uh, everybody to, to make use of this platform. Is that a charge service, and is it available for all uh, customers of all yes. the different uh, networks? It's available on all networks, and it's a free of charge service. There is no, no, ta no charges. The rural places that you visited first were in Vanu level. So how many rural areas have you covered so far? Um, we have uh, a comprehensive plan which we publish in the daily newspapers uh, as well to, uh, to provide that information and uh, uh, we are uh, continuously going into these areas, yes. Yeah, I've seen a lot of your team but not just, uh, just the office itself 
in terms of awareness in the newspaper, online, mm -hmm. very comprehensive stuff. What has the feedback been like? What are some of the most common questions asked from the people in the rural areas? Um, of course, uh, the, the first thing everybody wants to know is when is the election? Mm -hmm. And uh, our answer is still the same. We will be able to tell you once the date has been announced. Okay. Uh, the, there are some other questions, um, particularly uh, in, 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 uh, in terms of uh, voting. And if you're not available on election day at your polling station, what your options are. Um, then there are some questions about uh, the, the, the voter list. Uh, in fact, uh, for this election, to ensure that we've got a very accurate voter list, uh, we have pr a printed provisional voter list and we sent it across to all the Turangani Koros and district advisory councillors and uh, asked them to verify these in their communities. Mm -hmm. And they did it and they have returned the voter lists to us and they have recommended the changes that we have to make to accommodate people in those areas. Um, um, Lomanikoro and Bua actually, um, itself there were 16 corrections that we, uh, we did uh, at that place uh, to, uh, to those people who had moved in. There mm -hmm. were people who have also moved out of the polling place, uh, moved out of the area. So their details were updated. And uh, we anticipate to do this for every village that is there to ensure that they're all able to vote at their polling stations. Thank you for that, Mr. Sanim. We'll be back with more after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Matthew, I believe you have a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Sinim. You spoke about the books having sign languages mm -hmm. for people with disabilities. Now, I was wondering, are the polling stations disability friendly? Um, yes. First of all, uh, the Fijian Elections Office is at the mercy of the owners of the venues mm. in terms of disability compliance. But where possible, we are, we are making sure that uh, persons with disability have access to the polling station. And uh, our teams have also been trained on how to handle uh, situations uh, with persons who cannot come inside a polling station. Yeah. As you would have noticed from the voting screens that were uh, cardboard voting screens that were given to us by the New Zealand uh, government, the, there is a, in every pack, there is a scre voting screen for persons with disability. And uh, those voting screens uh, can be taken outside a polling station and placed on the lap of a person to allow the person to, to mark their ballot in secrecy. So there is, whilst we're trying to make sure that everybody is able to get inside a polling station, mm. our process does not exclude a person because they can't come in. We can take the ballot paper the ballot box as well as the voting screen outside a polling station to allow this person to exercise his or her right. And is the Fiji Elections Office working with relevant stakeholders like FNCDP? Actually, uh, we have uh, a, an ongoing terms of reference uh, engagement with uh, the Disabled Council, uh, not only the Disabled Council, but with all the disability organizations in Fiji. And we work very closely. My direct operations is a chair of the of the committee, mm -hmm. and we work very closely with them to develop uh, uh, materials, to develop procedures, to make sure that the elections processes are disability friendly. Um, we also have uh, uh, people who have disability, but they will be working on election day mm -hmm. uh, as election staff. Uh, so uh, we are trying to make sure that we become more and more inclusive as we go. Uh, we've had three years, so we've worked on some items, uh, and there is still time to work on a lot more to make sure that these questions are not even relevant in the future. Mm -hmm. Of course, you'll be having uh, polling happening. People will be going over to the polling stations to get their votes uh, in. But for those who are not able to do that, there's postal voting. Yes. Could you please elaborate more on that? How does it work? Okay, so um, the first thing to do about postal voting is that you can read on, on it on page 15 of the Election Information Handbook. On page 15, we are explaining how one can apply for a postal vote and uh, the processes that are involved and the forms that are required for the person to fill. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we explain uh, how the process will take place, what we will send to the voter once your vo postal votes are approved. Mm -hmm. uh, 
just to cut it short to in on on particularly here mm -hmm. uh, we have in the election information handbook yeah. the election information booklet the postal voting application form is part of the booklet okay. and a person can actually just tear off the the form from the the booklet fill it up and send it to my office uh, and you don't have to go looking for a form uh, the alternative would be to download the form from our website so um, Yes, if you can't get to your polling station, you can apply for a postal vote. How to do it is enclosed in the election information handbook. Of course, uh, we cannot say when elections will be held. Mm -hmm. However, with the postal elections, sorry, postal votes being given in, there mm -hmm. would be a particular time frame for that to um, for, for people to actually hand them in. Yes, postal vote applications open once the the election date is announced, mm -hmm. and it closes 23 days after the writ is issued. So. Uh, there is time uh, and depending on the announcement and, and the, the, the spacing of the, uh, but um, we would encourage people to apply early. We will not wait on the 20th until the 23rd day to start sending the postal votes. Mm. Uh, on read day plus 18, we will start send, uh, no, read day plus 20, we will start sending out postal um, packages for voters to mark and send back to us. So read day plus 20, we will start sending it out. But um, my advice would be for voters not to wait for the last minute to apply. Mm -hmm. Apply early so that we can dispatch your postal vote packet early mm -hmm. and you will have more time to re uh, to send it back to us. Is there also a complaints process in the book that people can follow? Okay, so under the electoral framework, uh, a registered voter may complain against the decision of the supervisor of elections and uh, they can do so um, through a complaint form that we have enclosed in this book. Mm -hmm. It's actually the last page. We have also at the back of the form included information on how to deal with the form. And this uh, complaint will go to the uh, electoral commission and uh, it will be dealt with by the electoral commission. Um, this can also be downloaded online as well. Yes. Uh, we have also included, uh, talking about forms, Matthew, we have also included um, the objection to the registration of a person as a voter. Yeah. We've included that form um, so that if you feel that someone is not entitled to be registered as a voter but has already received registration, you can use this form to object about that person. There is uh, an appeal against the decision of the supervisor of elections in case uh, someone is aggrieved about a decision that I have made under the acts you can uh, you can do so uh, please read section uh, 11 uh, to understand the, the requirements around it and then there is of course the postal voting application form uh, as I have said so we have included a couple of forms in here mm -hmm. uh, to that I that are related to the voter and uh, for the voter to be able to use them thank you for that mr. Sanim we'll be back with more after the break Good evening and welcome back. What can voters do in preparation for the election? I think the, the first thing that a voter uh, should do is to check where they're voting. Mm. That's the first thing. And uh, they still have time in the event they're not um, comfortable with that place. They can change it to the one that they're more comfortable with. And then on election day itself, uh, my recommendation would be to come early. Come early, bring an umbrella. Uh, 2014, uh, we saw some lines, and uh, that was uh, it was good. But uh, if you want to be in the shade, bring your umbrella. Get, bring a bottle of water, and um, be prepared to to vote. So the voter card, bottle of water, and umbrella. Um, I would I would suggest yes. Of course, mm -hmm. with the voter card, you need to be registered to vote. When is the last day for registration? The last day for registration is once the writ is issued and uh, of course once we know those dates we will be making those uh, public knowledge as well mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, voters are aware and uh, people who are not yet voters but would like to be can, uh, can, can quickly register. Speaking of the writ, most people won't know what the writ is. Could you please tell mm -hmm. us what is it and how does it work? What happens in the election process, the build up to it and of course the day off? So the writ is an instruction and an order by the president to the electoral commission to conduct an election. It's, it's, a, it's issued by the president 
um, and it gives a description and an outline of the number of days processes are to take place and, and some deadlines. Uh, and then based on the writ, the Electoral Commission will then instruct the Fijian Elections Office to carry out those processes within those time frames and provide the res necessary reports and results. And when can we expect the writ or something like that to happen? So uh, the writ will definitely be following the announcement of an election date and I am sure that once an election date is announced, uh, we will be able to calculate the date the writ needs to be issued to ensure that uh, the general election takes place in accordance with the law. How many days after the writ would elections take place? 44. Of course, after 44 days, when the election does take place, uh, we'll have our candidates, of course, with their numbers. Uh, yes. we'll, they'll have their three-digit numbers, of course. Yes. And uh, how can voters you know, know more about the candidate that they wish to vote for? Um, firstly, uh, to know the candidate or select a candidate, a voter will have to do its own research. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure, uh, based on 2014 experience, uh, candidates will be doing a lot of awareness themselves. They'll be doing a lot of campaigns, mm -hmm. and voters will be able to find out about them. When can we expect these candidates to start off, you know, a little bit of groundwork on getting themselves ready for elections? Of course, like you mentioned, we have to wait for the writ, and then we'll know that the elections will take place. But is there a particular time frame on how soon or how early the candidates can start off with their preparations? Candidates have already, in, in some cases, uh, we've heard over the media that uh, mm -hmm. some political parties have already identified their candidates. Uh, the potential candidates, I should call them. And some of them have started disseminating information about uh, their, their manifestos. Um, and as uh, we know, as we grow closer to the 6th of April, I'm sure there will be more information coming out. Uh, in terms of campaigning, um, what sort of restrictions do the parties have? So there, are, there is section 112 of the Electoral Act that prescribes campaigns and, and uh, procedures around campaigns. Uh, that comes into effect once an election date is known. Um, there is a comprehensive statement that I released on this matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available on our website. Uh, the parties uh, have also been given the candidates manual. Uh, that has a lot of details about the campaign. Polling Agents Handbook also has a lot of details about campaign as well as the media handbook. So um, we have, firstly I would recommend for any person who wants to know, read the law. But uh, there is also explanations in, in the manuals and booklets that we have released. So uh, there is information out there for someone to do this properly. Uh, we sometimes see that people don't check what the law requires and then they uh, proceed to do something and it, when it breaches the law, and then the ignorance is not an excuse. Uh, one of the things that I would say as the supervisor of elections is that the electoral laws in Fiji have now been in place for three years and 11 months at the least. On the 28th of March, yeah. it will be four years. So there is no excuse for anybody not knowing the law. The law is also available in, in various uh, places. The First of all, it is the uh, new revised uh, laws of Fiji. It's available as that. Secondly, it's available on the Fijian Elections Office website as annotated version. And there are other sources for the electoral laws. So uh, it is no longer sufficient for someone to give an excuse that I do not know what the law states. If you are, willing, if you are publishing materials which is related to an election campaign, mm -hmm. which may be regarded as an election campaign, you must know what the law says. Same goes for print houses, printing companies, media, and everybody. Before you undertake an exercise, and, and I think it's an opportune time for me to say it because we haven't started this into a, a very active role yet in Fiji. And um, before anybody prints any material that is related to elections yeah. or any, any, any publication that is related to elections, you should check what the law says. The Fijian Elections Office, we have published material that tries to clarify this, but we don't give legal advice. That's for your lawyers to tell you. So it's, it's important that people are able to check what the law requires them to do, rather than coming around and saying, sorry, we didn't know. Uh, the law also prescribes penalties for breaches. So if the law has been breached, we are required to then proceed with the penalties. So I just thought to raise this at this point. Is there anything significant about the uh, date of April 6th? 6th of April is 
the conclusion of three years and six months of the parliament. And the constitution says that after three years and six months of the parliament, the prime minister can advise the president to dissolve parliament and issue a writ for elections. So that's the cut-off mark, three years, six months. Thank you for that. We'll delve more into that after the break. You're watching for the record. Welcome back. Now, Mr. Sneem, with the uh, going back to the elections information booklet that was, of course, launched mm -hmm. and that's been disseminated to uh, members of the public already. Mm -hmm. Why is the FEO so heavily invested in it and trying to promote, you know, awareness on it, giving it out mm -hmm. to people? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important? Um, firstly, this is election year, so as the election management body, we would like to make sure that the entire voter base has had gone through an election information booklet. Uh, we, f we believe that it is critical for our voters to know about the entire election process. Uh, we also believe that uh, launching it out in March is, is, uh, is ideal because it gives voters at least a good safe three weeks to, to go through it and if there are any questions to ask us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, actually um, the writ can be issued uh, after 6th of April and it it is important that every voter has on at least by the 6th of April the opportunity to get their polling venues corrected details updated and armed with information from the election information booklet we want the nation to be ready uh, and on standby and once the date of election is announced to to actually uh, do the election related uh, stuff but until then, it is critical for voters to know about the whole election process. Um, our voter awareness exercise, although is from 15th of April, uh, March to 29th of April, we intend to have covered a lot of ground by this, the first week of April. And uh, our target is that uh, we would like at least 400,000 voters to have received a copy of the handbook uh, by that date. And uh, of course, uh, there is uh, always access to other information. As Matthew said, our Facebook page is very active uh, and we have over 80,000 people on our Facebook page and we are uh, pushing out the messages from the election information booklet on our Facebook page regularly. So uh, we need to build capacity. In 2014, the total, uh, the total invalid votes was 0.75% mm -hmm. uh, and we would like to at least keep up to that figure or at least below 4% for the next general election. And is the team fully prepared at this point? So we had said the target date was 1st of April. We still have about a good uh, 15 days or so left to get to that date. Um, preparations are on track. And uh, of course, um, we, are, we are now heavily concentrating on the finalization of uh, the staffing for polling places. So um, in, the, in, in the, f the next few days, uh, we will be signing up more contracts and, uh, and engaging more people to take up places in polling stations so that we are able to have a full-fledged uh, staff on election day, whenever it is. Given the information in the election information booklet, mm -hmm. is there any particular place in the booklet, any information that you'd like to highlight that mm -hmm. is of importance, of significance, that everybody needs to go over? Um, if I have to take a pick, I would say page 17. Page 17 uh, gives you the basic information on how to vote. Uh, if, if anything, the voter needs to see in this book is page 17. Um, other pages have a lot of information that is relevant, but page 17 can give you the basic minimum information you need before you join the queue at a polling place. Is there any final messages you want to give our voters? Yes, sir. we on the show? Of course, yes. Um, uh, the 2018 general election uh, is around the corner. Um, it is incumbent of en on every voter to be equipped with sufficient knowledge yeah. to be able to cast their vote. Uh, the election information handbook that we have prepared is designed to give you that amount of information. And I would like to urge every Fijian to try and obtain a copy of this handbook and go through it thoroughly so that you are an informed voter and you know how your uh, what as the chairperson said you know the deal with the ballot paper yeah 
and the deal that comes with the ballot paper. So I would like to encourage everybody to please obtain a copy of the election information handbook so that they are more informed as a voter and a well prepared voter on election day. Thank you. Thank you for that Mr. Samin. If you'd like more information regarding the FEO's Know Your Election Awareness campaign, you can either visit your nearest Voter Services Centre or Divisional Office. If you'd like to call them, you can do so on 331-6225 or send an email to info at feo.org.fj. Up next, my say with Nemani Ndelai Mbatiki. We hope you enjoy the show tonight. From Matthew, the team and myself, have a wonderful evening. Good evening, I'm Nemani Jalain Batiki of the Fiji Sun. Welcome to Fiji's first TV editorial show. In my say tonight, I will speak on students' behavior on school buses. Students' hooliganism on school buses has gone too far. It must stop. The latest reported incidents involve buses belonging to the Nasese Buses Limited of Suba. The ripping out of bus seats and the damaging of windscreen and windows is vandalism at its worst. It is criminal and those involved must not be allowed to get away with it. They must be subject to the full processes of the law and be made to realize that vandalism of any kind is unacceptable and not condoned. When a bus is moving, any activity on board is fraught with danger and can compromise the safety of the drivers and passengers. The, auda the audacious nature in which the latest incidents played out tells us that the students have become more daring and dangerous. If action is not taken on these latest incidents, it is going to get worse. Daredevils out there could be planning more bizarre acts which they may regard as simple pranks. There are a few more zone athletic meetings to take place before the Fiji Secondary School's athletic finals next month. In the coming weeks, there is potential for more violence and the message must go out now that enough is enough. People are sick and tired of hearing and seeing scenes of violence by students. Whether it is destruction or defacing of property or the rivalry between students on the field spilling into the streets. It is serious and must be nipped in the bud. Violence is not the desired method to achieve an objective or, left or to let off steam. It always leads to pain, suffering and heartache and to a certain extent loss of lives and property. The violent behavior on the buses could endanger the lives of not only the perpetrators, but other fellow passengers and the drivers. How can we resolve this problem? First, each school bus must have an adult supervisor to ensure that students comply with the rules. The driver cannot drive and look after the students at the same time. When you have more than 60 screaming students breathing down your neck, it can be overwhelming. The supervisor can be a school teacher, a parent, land transport authority officer, or police officer. A meeting of all stakeholders or holders will work out the mechanics. One of the contributing factors to party mood in buses is the loud music. When the music is blared by the bus driver or passengers carrying their own music, it creates this party atmosphere. Passengers join the fun and some go further and do stupid things like ripping out bus seats. Loud music must be banned in buses. Not all passengers like loud music. Some enjoy a quiet ride, read a book, listen to a favorite program, phone a friend or loved one, or simply take a nap before getting off at the next destination. The last thing they want is loud music. Overloading must stop. It's unhealthy and risky to students. It creates an environment of uneasiness and frustration which can be expressed in different forms including violence. Bus operators must provide extra buses to cater for students and ensure that no one is left behind. Parents need to play a more active role. They should set the rules at home and draw boundaries for their children on what they can do and what they cannot do. Unless we take concrete steps to address this problem now, we may live to re regret it later. 
This is Nemani Jalembatiki of the Fiji Sun. That was my say tonight. For more of my views, you can read the Fiji Sun. See you next week.